if a crime's committed for God to be just, he has to punish the guilty to vindicate the innocent. The sword has two edges, and that's the picture in the Old Testament of justice. It punishes the guilty and it vindicates the innocent. This is Ask Dr. E, where Dr. Michael Easley answers your biblical or theological questions in 10 minutes or less. Today's question, we are recording live at a high school senior Bible class, and so they've got their questions for us. Go ahead. If the Bible says to follow the rules of the land, what if they outlaw the Bible or force you to bow down to other gods? Yeah, that's a chilling thought, and unfortunately, I'm not a, I'm not a, fortunately, I'm not a prophet. Unfortunately, I don't think that's too far out of reach. I think there may be a time um, we saw during the pandemic and the COVID lockdown, some of the things, different states and our friends in the North and Canada uh, were forced by the government. You can't, you can't meet, you can't have church. We know in Romans 13, the first four verses, and in 1 Peter uh, 2, 13 to 17, we're to obey the governing authorities over us. We also know that God allows these human institutions to exist. And that's always a tension for any of us because, frankly, we don't like a lot of politicians. Frankly, we don't like laws. I mean, I don't know anyone that likes to see uh, police lights in your rearview mirror when you're driving. There's this internal angst when we encounter the law, and I think that's illustrative of our, of our situation. But civil laws are good. I mean, the fact that we have a police force is to protect us from you know robbery, from assault, from murders, from rape. I mean, it's a good thing to have an authority. And if we're good people living in a society and you know, following the rules, we have less trouble, likelihood of getting in trouble, right? I mean, if you're doing the right thing, you got nothing to fear. Um, justice, however, is two-edged. And this is the part we don't like. If a crime's committed for God to be just, he has to punish the guilty to vindicate the innocent. A sword has two edges, and that's the picture in the Old Testament of justice. It punishes the guilty and it vindicates the innocent. So that's what God's justice does. Otherwise, there is no justice. When, when someone loses a, a loved one in a horrible crime and they can't convict the, the guilty, uh, the parents, uh, the, let's say a woman, say, we have no justice. We'll have no justice until that person is in jail or you know, some kind of punishment is meted out. So lots of nuances when it comes to we're under this authority. In, in the main, we hope it's for good. In the main, we hope that, that governing authorities are there to protect us. But sinful people are involved. So let's fast forward, and the government says you can't have a Bible anymore. You can't go to church anymore. you got to worship the government. Well, that's ostensibly what Rome did. Rome said that, you know, Caesar said, I'm, I'm the word Caesar, Kaiser, you know, about Kaiser and we, Talk about the Germans. Caesar is a etymologically related to the word Kaiser, meaning it's the skin of a man stuffed with God. Pharaoh thought he was God. This is an age-old issue. So when leaders put themselves in the place of God, Nebuchadnezzar, you're going to worship me, the believer has to make a decision. We know the story of Daniel, who didn't, who opened the window, and he prayed. You know, and, and that's a whole big story. So we get into an area called civil disobedience, and this is a very complex, like college course kind of subject. But let's just say the government makes us do something that's against our faith, our religion. Conscience is hard. You know, it's against my conscience. That's tough to measure. But let's just say they want us to worship them as, as gods. So we have the right under the authority to say, no, I won't do that. But in the New Testament, if we're going to do that, it seems to me you have to submit yourself to the punishment that would go along with civilly disobeying. You can't just, you know, steal jewelry because it's a corrupt company and not have a punishment. If you're going to break the law, you're going to do the time, so to speak. And that's the hard part of it. So if I was commanded to worship someone other than Jesus, I hope I would have the courage to say, no, I'm not going to do that. And they go, well, this is the death penalty. I said, well, I submit myself. I'll go to court. And if you kill me, you kill me. But I will not bow down and worship an elected official who thinks he or she's God because I believe in Jesus Christ. Now, I hope I would do that. I hope I wouldn't cave. Um, but I think that's the intent. Now, 
add on to this question because um, I lived in the Washington, D.C. area for many, many years. Um, that's why we really need good people who are willing to run for office. Because if good people don't have the courage to go say, I'm going to run for, you know, city council, school board, whatever, you know, who's going to find those offices? And if we don't have good people as elected officials, as judges, as policemen, as attorneys, then we're in more and more peril. And that's one of the challenges of our, even our current culture is that people don't want to do these things for good reasons. Why in the world would you run for office and be hated and slandered and, you know, beat up and get paid, you know, a terrible amount of money? Why would you do that? You know, it's a hard question, but if people don't step up and do these things, then, you know, we'll reap the, the results. I mean, it's happening right all over the world. Sure. China, of course, is our, the largest church that's totally illegal. Lawyers, and I just, yeah. I was thinking through like, you know, where else thinking about during the Nazi regime, believers who chose to hide Jews. I mean, they were defying their government yeah. of the time. Um, We've been insulated. I mean, we're only 247 years old this year. We're a baby. We're the youngest country on the planet. We think we're something. Uh, you know, Israel's thousands of years old. You know, Europe's thousands of years old. If you've not been to Europe, seen cathedrals that took 600 years to build, for goodness sakes, three times longer than the U.S. almost. So we have this really tiny view of history, which is to our peril. And you're exactly right. You know, much of the world that Christian is persecuted. China is perhaps the most egregious. India is becoming not just hard, but hostile toward Christians. And so those men and women have terrible choices to make. Um, we could talk, I know stories of uh, a particular Chinese family that has been in prison forever because the father was a pastor in an underground church. And he's been in prison probably 20 plus years now. And um, his family's gone to prison because of that as well. So you know, we're, we're pretty charmed over here. We don't yeah. realize it. And even in Canada and COVID, when that one pastor was, you know, threatened with jail, like he went to jail for a short time. That's pretty, pretty, uh, like tame. Banal. Yeah. yeah. Tame to, to, yeah. To, to, to the persecuted church. You're yeah. right. So yeah. we're, we're pretty, uh, removed from the consequences of these things. But again, I hope even in a situation, I hope I'd have the courage right to say, there. you know, I trust Jesus. I love Jesus. Mm -hmm. And and that's what happens. That's what happens. Yeah. All right. If you've got a question for Dr. E, call us, text us, email us. The info is in your show notes. Ask Dr. E is produced by me, Hannah Seymour, mixed and mastered by Sonomorphic, and music composed by Jason Germain.